Jazz is a dying genre. We know this. I certainly can't remember the last time I've heard a proper blues song that was released in recent years, let alone ragtime or anything of the sort. Maybe the genre of jazz is flourishing somewhere in our society, hidden in the depths of the internet. But to me, along with the common public, I just felt a decline in what used to be the magical sensation of a, a good old sax, trumpet, piano combo. Recently though, I've heard there's this artist making waves in the realm of jazz and classical music lately. Wait, wait, hold on, let me, get, you, give me a sec. Leve! Damn, that's a beautiful ass name. You may be thinking, well, I've never heard of Leve before, but if you've ever heard- Wait, wait, hold on, let me just- Cue the music! Don't you notice how I get- You've heard her music. Not only does she have a beautiful voice and the stage presence of a goddess- <laughs> Get it? But she's also so real. A lot of musicians or celebrities have a bit of disconnect between them and their audience, but Leve is different. She feels not just like an artist, but someone I can look up to. She has a real personality that I can connect with, experiences and feelings that her listeners can align themselves with, which is reflected in her songs too. But before we get to the songs, why don't we learn a little bit more about both her and jazz as a whole? So starting with jazz itself, jazz is a music genre started by African American people in near the 19th and 20th centuries with early ties to the previous mentioned ragtime and blues. People primarily know jazz for its swing rhythm and tone, as well as its very complicated articulation of chords. Believe it or not, jazz itself is also based off European classical music, combined with African folk songs during times of slavery. I will open up my heart. It's golden age primarily during the 1920s to 1933 in the United States. It was sprung on by the Prohibition in the United States, which basically just banned the sale of alcohol drinks. Thus, places where alcohol was illegally sold became very, very common, in which jazz was often played within the buildings. Despite its, albeit peaceful tone, it wasn't actually considered real music by many during this time period due to its placement in illicit speakeasies. It was frequently regarded as immoral and wrong by those of older generations, due to its rejection of the ideals emphasized by the Roaring Twenties. Despite its roots in African American culture, a large portion of the jazz market actually belonged to white orchestras, as many white musicians began to rise to fame using jazz as their genre. One prominent example is Paul Whiteman's band, which is a group of several, believe it or not, white men playing jazz across the whole world. Following their success, many black artists began to follow suit, a couple of whom being Duke Ellington, Louis Armstrong, and many more. These men were revolutionary in the growth of jazz, as Louis Armstrong became a featured soloist in the widely known Fletcher Henderson dance band in the early fucking 1900s. With the level of racism they had back then, that's actually crazy. Louis Armstrong became a leader in the new era of jazz, where his sounds are described as stiff and stodgy with jerky rhythms and a great undistinguished tone quality. Louis Armstrong's solos were a significant factor in making jazz a true 20th century language. Not long after, Armstrong formed his own band called the Hot Five, but what truly skyrocketed jazz to the way it is now is thanks to the influence of Duke Ellington. Despite swing reaching its near height of popularity, Duke Ellington spent a lot of his time actually going against the norm. He began to experiment with several different orchestras using primarily harmony and musical form, with complex compositions that still translated well for popular audiences. Now, you're probably wondering, what does this all have to do with Leve? Well, first thing you can notice is that in a lot of her songs, swing is very prevalent, as well as orchestral sounds. And although she has her own style, there's also a lot of different inspiration from classical music as well. Which I will not be getting into the history of classical music, because it is long, painful, and arduous. So if you are interested in learning a lot more about classical music, then feel free to do your own independent study. That aside, however, let's focus back onto Leve. Leve is a 25 year old, as of the recording of this video, half Icelandic and half Chinese Berkeley graduate, singer, songwriter, pianist, celloist, guitarist, <sighs> and record producer, born on April 23rd, 1999 in Iceland, two days after my birthday. And as a young child, she moved between Reykjavik and Washington, D.C., as well as visiting Beijing. 
Her goal in making music is to bring older genres of music back to the younger generation. Funny enough, Leva has been making music for as long as she can remember. Every day after school, she'd come home to play piano and cello all of the time. And hey, that's cool and all, but after school, I was playing Fortnite, bro. <laughs> right beside her twin sister, Junya, who actually plays violin in nearly every single one of Leve's songs. <coughs> I forgot to mention that twins, by the way. Oops. She's inspired by Chet Baker, Ella Fitzgerald, and a plethora of romantic classical composers. And whether you love her or you hate her, Taylor Swift. This, this seems to be some kind of weird theme. Why is everybody inspired by Taylor Swift? I don't fucking get it. She's been playing music far before her debut as a singer, but on April 6, 2020, she released her first debut single called Street by Street, which charted at, holy shit, number one in Atlantic radio. From this point on, she continued to make music collaborating with the London Philharmonic Orchestra to release her song, Let You Break My Heart Again, and then December of that year, collaborated with singer Dodie to release another single called Love to Keep Me Warm. Of course, she continued to make music after that until her debut album, Everything I Know About Love. Themed around the struggles of becoming an adult, Everything I Know About Love received a universal acclaim based on a weighted average of 82 out of 100 from four critic scores. The album houses several different titles, that being, here goes the long list, Fragile, Beautiful Stranger, Valentine, Above the Chinese Restaurant, Dear Soulmate, What Love Will Do To You, Nightlight. Adding on to that, the deluxe edition includes <laughs> Independently, each of these songs performed extremely well. The most popular song she released amongst these was Valentine, with Not Far Behind being, ironically enough, Falling Behind, with over 145 million listens current day. Needless to say, her album Everything I Know About Love, released in 2022, was extremely successful, and it shared her path to stardom from that point on. Following this release in 2023, Leve released Bewitched, which is a whole different ballpark, centered around simply love. Uh, is something supposed to be happening or- ah! Oh my god, that scared me. Can, can we turn this off? It reached huge success with almost every single song having at least over 8 million listens, a majority of them being over 10 million. And it was awarded a Grammy for Best Traditional Pop Vocal Album. And the Grammy goes to... Living. Wow, thank you all so much. This is incredible. <laughs> I never and finally, in the current day, she's featured in Biba Doobie's single, A Night to Remember, as well as the deluxe version of A Bewitched, which has Goddess, Trouble, It Could Happen to You, and Bored. Despite Leve's wild success as a music artist, I think what makes Leve such a beautiful artist is how down-to-earth she is. Her music is meant for no other time than the current century, in which heartbreak and relationships have never been more rampant. Leve primarily attracts teenagers with her relatable lyrics that resonate with people all around the world, who are feeling the same heartbreak that her song represents. I personally, as a 17-year-old kid, have experienced heartbreak before, and it hurts. Best believe. But just like any other teenagers out there, Leve's music provides a glowing light at the end of the tunnel, something to help pull you out of that depressive state. Music that you can relate to that tells you that you aren't alone, but that there's also so much more things in life. Whether that be a letter to my 13 year old self, which explores Leve's childhood as a girl who couldn't quite fit in, or why you're sleeping, which beautifully captures the warm air you feel when you fall in love, or even California and me, which basically encapsulates the feeling of heartbreak. Leve's cult following is nothing but deserved, because not only did she come from humble beginnings, literally just posting her music on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram, but she has risen to stardom and proven herself to be an artist worth respecting. Nowadays, the music industry is painfully oversaturated with the same type of music over and over again, but what Levy brings to the table is something so unique I've never seen it done before. And not only that, but she's bringing back the classic genre of jazz, which although has been coming back in recent years, has not been nearly as done as well as Levy's done it. And for all the singers and musicians out there, she stands as someone worth looking up to. I mean, as a jazz musician myself, albeit not amazing, but still a musician, she's someone that I can always look up to to say, wow, I could really make it that far if I really tried hard enough. At the end of the day, Leve just feels like a person. A person who we've gone to know, learn about, and love. 
Through each of her songs and albums, we learn more about her as an artist, but also a person. And through that, we've been able to fully respect her. Respect her journey, respect her music, and respect her life. Every single song we're reminded that she's just like us. She grew up just like us. With every interview, she reminds us that she never saw this kind of career coming. And it's truly beautiful to see an artist this humble, genuinely, especially nowadays. So, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.